Ilhan Omar is under fire, even by Trump, for saying that 9-11 was just somebody did something. Now, there was more context to what she said. She was saying that after 9-11, Muslims were getting treated like shit. Muslims were being looked at as second-class citizens. And even George Bush at the time, after 9-11, was saying, hey, we, there are a lot of upstanding Muslim citizens here. They are just as much citizens, they are just as much Americans as everyone else. He wanted to, to nip Islamophobia in the bud, right? So, I understand the concerns that people have as far as the types of threats that Ilhan Omar has been getting. These aren't just, these aren't just the types of death threats that you find from random people on Twitter. These are things that are very concerning. She is concerned for her life. Having said that, she still hasn't apologized for calling 9-11 somebody did something. She hasn't apologized for it. She's went on the identity issues, identity politics, and is trying to say that the only reason why she's being attacked is because she's a progressive Muslim woman of color. And that's unfortunate. That, I, I wish she would actually apologize. Not that an apology would, would completely stop the death threats. Not that the apology would do any good to a lot of people who are against her. But it would certainly help the situation. She shouldn't double down on the identity politics as a response to this. But that's how it's going. What I see from a number of people is this idea that, oh, well, we shouldn't be worried about Islamic terrorism. What we should be worried about are white supremacists. Should we be concerned about white supremacists? Surely, because, I mean, you wouldn't have had the Christchurch shooting if, if there was no concern. There wouldn't be a number of other incidents that have happened if there was no concern. There's obviously, obviously a concern about that. The majority of terrorist attacks that have happened here in the United States over the past year have, have been from, uh, from white supremacists. So they're definitely a concern. The problem is, more and more people are being considered white supremacists just for believing in things like the melting pot and, that, and this idea that we should have a common culture. People who just push forth those things are, are being called white supremacists because, oh, you're supporting the white supremacist patriarchy. And it's just like, come on. You know, do you, do you know how big of a percentage of, of the country that would be including? I mean, anyone who believes in the melting pot and anyone who believes that there should be a common culture, they're put into that category? That's a problem. That, that's a problem. We should be calling out actual white supremacy. White supremacist, I should say. Not this new sociological definition where anyone who, again, pushes this idea that, that we should have a common culture are white supremacists. Yeah, I don't know. Another thing I think about is how I never see LGBT activists pushing against businesses that are religious, that, well, I should say, businesses that the owners are religious uh, should be boycotted except for Christian ones, like Chick-fil-A, because they, the owners believe in traditional man and a woman type of marriage, and that they gave to the Family Research Council. They donated to the Family Research Council, and therefore they're anti-gay. And it's just like, no, their business isn't anti-gay. 
but we're, we're supposed to boycott them and ban them because they, they, they're they hateful. It's just, that's hateful? That's not, that's not hateful. Um, now, maybe you could consider some of the beliefs of those from the Family Research Council. Maybe you could find some of their beliefs hateful, but that's, even that's kind of up in the air. But you don't see anyone, you don't see LGBT activists trying to boycott any Muslim businesses. And I'm sure there's a number of Muslim businesses who, um, they may not believe that th this should be put into law, or they at least that they don't have the power to put this into law, but there's I'm sure there's a number of Muslims who have businesses that think that gays should be punished in some way, like even stoning or whatever, or that gay being gay is wrong, flat out wrong. Yeah, you don't see any LGBT activists doing that. Well, because of intersectionality. Because intersectionality has taken over the narrative. And, uh, you know, if you, if you push against anything Muslim, that's Islamophobia. But you can push all you want against anything Christian, and that's not considered Christianophobia. I don't know, it's, it's weird. Um... I guess I don't know what more to say, and I'm just kind of rambling at this point. So, uh, banana. <laughs>